In this video, we'll be looking at temperature and evaporation with respect to intermolecular forces. So you recall from the gas unit that temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy. The formula for kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity. So we've established that temperature measures kinetic energy. So if a sample has a lot of temperature, that means it has a lot of kinetic energy. So if something has a lot of kinetic energy, that means its molecules are moving fast. So if a sample's particles are moving fast, that means it's at a high temperature. It's important to know this. It's also important to know that the temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. So if you were to look at a sample, some molecules would be going fast and some molecules would be going slow. The temperature measures the average velocity of those molecules. The faster the molecules are moving, the greater the temperature of the sample. So let's say we have a sample. It's a liquid sample, maybe even water in fact, and we have molecules. Notice that the molecules are moving. Um, this one is moving slowly, this one's moving a little quicker, and this one here, and this one here, those are moving fast. So some of them are moving slow, some of them are moving fast. If we were to take the temperature of this sample, it would measure the average velocity of these molecules here. So let's read this statement. Only the fastest moving molecules will have sufficient energy to overcome the intermolecular force of attraction and enter the gas phase. So we've learned about intermolecular forces. Once again, those are forces that exist between molecules. So what we've established is there's a force that exists between these water molecules. Some of these are moving fast and some of them are moving slow. You know that, that some of these water molecules will evaporate. Well, as it turns out, only the fastest ones are able to evaporate because the fastest moving ones, those are the ones that have sufficient kinetic energy to overcome the intermolecular force of attraction and break free into the gas phase. So of all these gas molecules here, some are going slow, some are going fast. This one here is in the interior, so that's not going to escape. It's this one here that will probably escape into the gas phase because it's moving fast and it's by the surface. If fast molecules escape, then slow ones are left behind. And the slow ones are the cold ones. So when a sample of water evaporates, it's a cooling process. And, and this liquid would get colder if the faster ones leave. Because remember, temperature measures average kinetic energy. And average kinetic energy is how fast and slow the molecules are moving. So if the fast, if the fast ones leave, those are the warm ones. That leaves behind the slower ones. Those are the cold ones. So we know that evaporation is endothermic. That means heat is required. and It's a cooling process. You probably experienced this at the doctor's office before a shot. When they rub alcohol on your skin, the alcohol evaporates very quickly and consequently it leaves your skin feeling cool. Now we've looked at heating and cooling curves before, but I want to point out uh, maybe one new thing. So you recall, as we add heat, in general, the temperature of the sample begins to get warmer. But there are two places where the temperature does not change. It's at the two plateaus, here and here. But we know that we're adding heat. Remember, this is like water on top of a stove. So even though the temperature's not changing, we're still adding plenty of heat. So where is that heat going if it's not going towards raising the temperature? I mean, during the liquid phase, when we add heat, the heat goes to making the molecules move faster, and the faster moving molecules have a hotter temperature. But that's not what we see here. So what's going on here? Well, this unit is about intermolecular forces. And you know that intermolecular forces cause molecules to be attracted to one another. 
So as we transition from the liquid phase to the gas phase, molecules are close together here and far apart here. That means that all of this energy we add during this time goes towards separating those molecules. It goes towards overcoming the intermolecular forces. So let's read this. Notice on the plateau, the sample experiences no change in temperature, despite the fact that heat is added. And the reason why? The added energy goes towards overcoming the intermolecular force, not towards making the molecules move faster. That is, not towards increasing their temperature. I hope you now understand a little more about heating and vaporization, especially with respect to intermolecular forces.